back to the morning blend. Spider veins can be seen through the skin and can cause uncomfortable feelings in the legs. And frankly, they're not pretty to look at either. Dr. Deborah Mangione and Lisa Thomas are here with the Wisconsin Vein Center and Maddie Spa with some old and new ways to get rid of spider veins. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Thanks for being here. And Thank I think it's worth us. pointing out that this is a good time of year if you have this problem to start thinking about it, it right? It really is because treatment of spider veins is actually a process. And so after one treatment, we like to wait four to six weeks then do another treatment. It may take two to three treatments to get rid of the spider veins completely. But it's, so it's a great time to start. Yeah, it's before <laughs> spring and, and right. summer get here. We've talked many times on this show about varicose veins. Yes. Today our focus is more on spider veins. Is it? Do you classify these as more a, a cosmetic problem? They usually are more of a cosmetic problem, but they may be indicative of something else going on. So depending on where the spider veins are located, they're kind of some clues to us. Uh, that they may be related to an underlying problem with the veins, like venous insufficiency, a larger vein that may have a problem with the valves. And also, um, spider veins can cause discomfort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think. Mm -hmm. A lot of women get them, right? It's quite common. Yes, it is. About 70% of women uh, throughout their lifetime will develop you know, some sort of spider vein so issue. So seven out of 10 women mm -hmm. at some point in their life will develop spider veins, usually in the legs? Typically, yeah. Okay, and what's the reason for that? I think a lot of people associate it with pregnancy. Um, it can be a cause um, from pregnancy, usually after you know having several children, uh, genetics or hereditary, um, so parents or grandparents have had it. Um, trauma to an area, okay. Um, venous insufficiency, like she mentioned, um, as well as um, maybe being overweight, Mm -hmm. um, and men can get them as well? Men can get them as well, yes. Okay, not as common probably right. in men? It's not as common in men. Uh, we see a lot of men who get them when they've been hit by a ball or something yep. earlier in life, and they have a bruise that then, uh, as it heals, they're left with spider veins. Why does that happen? really don't know why it happens. It's just that you're breaking some vessels underneath the skin. And when that happens, you can have other little tiny vessels in the fat and in the soft tissue suddenly become much more apparent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you mentioned that they can be painful. Is that a sign that maybe there's an underlying condition or another problem? It could be. We always look for something else when somebody comes in complaining of discomfort at a spider vein area, but it does not always mean there is another problem going on underneath. Okay. What about types of treatments? Because we mentioned when we were introducing you that there are some old treatments that are probably very successful but also some new things that you can do as well. True. Well sclerotherapy is the gold standard. Mm -hmm. Sclerotherapy means injecting an irritant into the vein to get the vein to go into spasm and close down. And we always use sclerotherapy as Lisa is doing in this video here. And we use two different detergents that are FDA approved for that. So they're much less painful than the old-fashioned method that was used many years ago where they used a, what we call a hypertonic saline or a salt solution that was very caustic and uncomfortable. But beyond that, we also use a laser on the surface of the skin mm -hmm. uh, to help injure the vein from the outside. It's, it's attracted to the pigment in the blood vessel, as we're seeing here. And then we also can use a little radio frequency needle or a hot needle, almost like an electrolysis needle. No, is can this also painful, the, the laser part of it? It feels like a hot needle, I would say. And we like to use some coolant. Yeah, we use coolant, it. so it's very tolerable. Okay. And we, typically our treatments are 10 to 20 minutes. Okay. Um, we usually treat an area, sometimes um, you know, just a leg at a time. Um, and you mentioned that it's a process. Is there downtime? And what about the support hose that a lot of people wear with this procedure? We do place our support hose um, before you even leave the office. We ask that you walk around. And we actually um, would like you to be active. Um, mm -hmm. So really, there's not a lot of downtime. If you're really strenuous, you know, you like to exercise, uh, we ask that you don't do, you know, really strenuous activity for about 24 or 48 hours. But really, there's no downtime at all. And we've actually seen some rather fashionable um, support hose yes. um, here on the show. I mean, they they used to be just like the nude, right. you know, or black, uh, but there are other colors and there's yes. a, there are easy ways to wear them. And I think this is a great time if you need to wear them yes. before summer gets here. Oh, I think so. Absolutely. You know, people don't like having these types of procedures done during the summer if they have to wear a darker stocking or they don't have their bare legs ready to be exposed. But this is perfect. So you can wear your bare legs without feeling embarrassed and without having the discomfort of the spider veins by summer. Yeah, we have two before and after pictures that kind of illustrate the look of these veins before and after and I would think that people along with maybe getting rid of some of the discomfort and pain are just really thrilled with how it looks you know just in terms of a superficial it just looks so much better and they feel right. better about themselves. They certainly do and you know people come in and they say I can't believe it I wore shorts this summer or I wore a skirt for the first time in years so it's nice and it also is a very nice way to finish up if we are treating varicose veins and somebody has spider veins as well 
then you know it's just one more step in getting those legs to look the way somebody wants them to. Quickly, does insurance cover spider vein no. treatment? Spider vein treatment is never covered by insurance unless somebody's been having hemorrhaging from the area, bleeding okay. from what we call little hypertensive spiders that can break open. That's varicose, very rare. Varicose though, do varicose insurance veins are pays. almost always <laughs> covered by the insurance company if somebody's symptomatic or they have any problems associated with them. Okay, nice to have both of you Thank here. You. Thank you so Thank much. You. It's worth being evaluated if you're having pain or discomfort, notice spider veins, especially because it might be the sign of something more serious. You can contact the Wisconsin Vein Center and MediSpa. They're located in Pewaukee. The phone number for an appointment consultation is 262-746-9088, or you can go to wimedispa.com. Again, thanks.